All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of 1869 Steampunk, which is being made by forum user Fengist. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a whole lot of new parts to allow you to build steampunk ships. And I love that. I've always had a very strange fascination with anything steampunk, so that makes me happy. It is also a mod which is inspired by another mod which we looked at a very long time ago, which at the time was known as uh, something along the lines of Professor Phineas Kerbenstein something or other. Nowadays, though, it goes by the Vertical Propulsion Emporium, and so I always love when mods play off of one another like that, and of course it is a mod by Fengist, who is the user who brought us the Maritime Pack, which we looked at also quite a while back, but was a very good quality mod. And that also should tell you something about this particular one, as well, Fengis does like his boats, and as you know, I occasionally have a nautical itch, and this mod definitely scratches that, as it is meant to be used to build sort of uh, steampunk submarines, is really what it seems to be geared towards at the moment, but... You don't need to. Uh, we're actually going to jump into the VAB rather than the space plane hangar for this because I actually think these parts at the moment, this is in beta version 0.1 release, so it's still quite early, but at the moment, all of these parts could as easily be used for a rocket, a space plane, as much as they could be used for a ship. So let's actually go to the search bar here as Fengist thankfully is one of the few modders who takes advantage of it and put in Fengists. And that brings us to all the lovely parts for this mod that we have here. Hopefully it's all of them. If not, I blame it on Fengist for not putting in the manufacturer, which of course for this mod is Fengist Clock and Watch Factory, which is just Fun. And I love these parts, all the beautiful copper and cast iron things, etc. It is just cool. So let's actually look at the, uh, first and foremost, the command pods for this and the crew containers, and then we'll go through the rest of the parts in order. So first, we have the FCW PK1 command pod, which is basically your standard command pod that's just been uh, steampunkified, as you can see here. I love it though, we got the little smokestack and everything. Unfortunately, no custom interior at the moment. I'm hoping that that comes down the road, but for right now, it uses the same interior as, of course, the standard Mark I command pod. Uh, hopefully, again, that will come in the future. But otherwise, just a, a fun, a nice little 1.25 command pod that works out quite well. Now, we also do have the FCW Pressurized Passenger Containment Device, which is just a place to store crew. And it, of course, is a 2.5 meter part here. Again, no interior. We just have some uh, lovely lights that go on. And I do love the design of this thing, as you got, like, copper and cast iron, I guess, is what the black is supposed to be, rivets, and a wooden deck right here, because again, it is kind of meant to be nautical, but you don't need it to be. And so the wooden deck, I think, is a nice little addition to it, and just fun. Now the last sort of crew part we have is the forward-looking pressurized passenger C, which is big. There we oh go oh god it went the other way. <laughs> Let's actually hold down that excellent beautiful. This is a pretty cool part and I just love the giant completely useless spire that it has to it. Again sadly no interior but it will hold a total of eight kerbals in there as well as uh, if you remember the maritime pack we have compressed water back again and yes so that of course is used for going underwater or balancing out your ship etc and this will hold 70 of it. Did the crew container? No, the crew container is just lights. If you turn those on, it will use electricity. And I didn't really tell you the stats of the PK-1, but it's basically identical to the Mark I command pod, where it holds one crew member, has the reaction wheel, crew report, electric charge, and some mono propellant. Always good, always fun. Now let's keep up the PK-1, as of course it is the same size as the Mark I, so we have a good size comparison, and then we'll start 
start up at the top here. Now the first thing we have is the battery 300 lightning bug, which is just a battery that holds good 300 electric charge. Now it's meant to be sort of radially attached as you can see here, and it's a pretty cool design. I like it. It's basically just like a coil design to it. And I just noticed, is there something written on the top there? Oh yeah, it looks like Fengist. Nice, I like it, I like it. A good little detail. There we go, so that is a battery. We then have the <laughs> Bent Conflagration Repercussion Discharge, which is what you use to create steam. This is a steampunk mod, of course, so you have to create steam. Now it will create two steam per second by using one ore, some air intake, some compressed water, which of course we saw earlier, and it'll take those to make the steam, and then that of course is what we power our engines with for this mod, and that that just makes me happy. Now this thing actually does count as an engine, which I find kind of weird. I think it's because of the particle effects. It is steampunk, it produces steam, etc. So you need puffs of smoke and steam coming out of things. And so it does count as an engine, but it has basically no thrust whatsoever. So it won't affect your ship, but it will give you that cool particle effect. And I do love this thing. And it's just, uh, I like the quality of the design to it. Very, very cool indeed. Now the next part we have is a cast iron adapter, which goes from the 1.25 to, of course, 2.5 and as you can see here it's got a little bit of an odd spacing but I guess that's for if you put in a decoupler here that would you know sort of fill that up but still if you don't have a decoupler it seems very very odd to me but nonetheless quite a nice little cast iron adapter we then have two different cast iron end caps the first of which being a 1.25 there we go and yeah just put it on the end of your ship to round it out quite nicely and then of course we we have the 2.5 version, which is much larger and basically identical to the other, except for size. We then have a large cast iron hull, completely useless as uh, for any stats. It is purely just a structural hull, so very similar to the uh, passenger cabin that we had here, just without the uh, portals and the ability to hold any crew. Now we then have another conflagration repercussion. Are I saying that right? Repercussion discharge? Yeah, I guess so. But again, this will produce steam by the use of ore, air intake, and compressed water. Now, unlike the other one, which was radially attached, this one attaches, well, it can actually still radially attach, but it has a flat bottom to it rather than the sort of side attach that this one had, as you can see right there. So just depending on the design of your ship as to which one you choose. We then have a dihedron monoxide displacement surface, which is a control surface. And it's gorgeous. It just looks like a big uh, fish fin or something. It's quite cool, and I love the cog design to it here. And of course, it will go back and forth as it is a usable control surface. Uh, the next thing we have is the Ferro Hydrodynamic Boring Engine. I love this thing. It is just beautiful. Uh, as you can see here, it's the 2.5 meter size. And uh, yeah, it's an engine. It is a uh, it is a giant, giant freaking engine that works like a boring machine. But it's meant to go, of course, through the water. Now, unfortunately, this is something I'll talk a little bit more about when we're out here. But I don't seem to be able to get these to move at the moment. They are supposed to. The various engines in this thing are supposed to move. But I have been unable to get them to. And I'll discuss a little bit more why that kind of bothers me when we're outside. But for right now, just giant corkscrew freaking engine that will output some electrical charge. Does have an alternator it will produce a maximum of 430 kilonewtons of thrust at the use of 0.365 steam per second. The steam in all of the engines is very, very efficient. And like with the uh, forward-looking pressurized passenger cabin, oh, uh, that's probably what the C was, isn't it? Yes, it just didn't fit all in there. Excellent. The boring engine uh, does also hold 70 maximum compressed water. So you can use it to balance out the front end of your ship. Now, the next thing we have is the fishtail propulsion system. A light like with the boring engine here, it is just another fun engine and is powered by lovely, lovely steam. Uh, this one using a max thrust of 300 or 330 kilonewtons, 
by using steam of 0.16 per second. Very nice, again does hold compressed water and will produce four electric charge per second. And again, an animation that doesn't quite work at the moment. It's a uh, fishtail, so it does go back and forth, or at least it's supposed to. Uh, more on that again later. Now the next part we have is the floodlight here, which is, well, just a, a lovely little floodlight if we zoom right on in there. I do like the design of the uh, couple of lights we have on here. It's just nice to have additional types and varieties. Uh, very good indeed. Uh, the next thing we have is a horn air intake, because, well, we have seen a couple of parts now that do require air intakes to function. And, well, this is just one of the several air intakes that we have available. Very cool indeed, and we'll do air intake amount of two. Uh, the next part we have is a <laughs> multi-fuel tail section. Oh god, I gotta zoom back out again. There we go, flip this baby around. I could have put it on top, but oh well. Now this is just a basic tail fin section made of cast iron, and it does have various fuel tanks. You can go liquid fuel, liquid fuel and oxidizer, or, or steam. Probably the worst combination to go between ore and steam, but okay, there we go, excellent. So we do have the steam container here and the ore for the production of steam, always good. Now the next part we have is the iron multi-fuel tank. Now this is, again, similar to the iron hull or the passenger cabin here, except this one will hold fuel instead. It has the same arrangement of liquid fuel, steam, or or liquid fuel and oxidizer. I really need to stop having ore as the second to last. <laughs> All right, a lovely large tank. We then have a smaller radial one that you can attach wherever you so desire. And oh, there we go, that's attaching quite nicely. And again, these same resources as the other tanks and it's always quite handy to have. Uh, we have another tail here, which is uh, just a, well, instead of the other resources, it holds compressed water. So if say, you use the boring engine up front, it would hold 70 compressed water, and then in the back, this one could hold 70 compressed water to help you balance out your vessel. Always convenient. We then have another lantern light here, which I love this light. It is very cool, because it has, of course, the light in there, and then you just see it through the four openings. Very awesome looking lantern. I love the detailing to it. It is probably my favorite light that I've seen for a very long time. We then have a fun loop antenna, which is, of course, a functioning antennae for data transmission. And it's just cool. I love the old look and feel to it. Of course, steampunk. We then have a fun maritime cradle. Now, this is used for uh, on your boats. If you do make them in the space plane hangar, you can attach these to the exterior and then wheels up here and then roll it down to the water. And then this is a decoupler, so it will release. So then you can float away the boat very convenient to have. We then have several mast pieces, again with the nautical intention of this mod. So we have a, yes, a five meter one right here. We then have a 10 meter mast here and a 15 meter mast. So however large you want it to be, and it's just very convenient. Now also we have some down here that goes with them, and that's the yard arms, which are one meter in size. So you can attach that to the outside of these to uh, make your mast however it is you desire. Quite cool, I do enjoy that little extra touch. And that, that's just fun. All right, let's pop that off and go to the next part. We have an ore drill, which is pretty cool. I, I like this thing. Again, just beautiful steampunk design to the whole thing. I love all the detailing. And of course, we can deploy it and it will have a drill, oh boy, which I attached it sideways, which will go into the earth to extract ore. Because of course, remember, you need that ore to create steam, very important. Now, of course, you're gonna need to find that ore. So we do have an ore finder. Finder, if I grab that and zoom back in, oh, it kind of is oddly attached there. Excellent. We have a just beautiful little thing. I love the coil design to it and the cast iron top. A very, very fun part. We then have another light, basically. It is to be a porthole similar to the one that you have on the crew cabin here, uh, but will light up wherever you put it, and just for extra effect, very fun to have. We then have a radial engine mount, which is very convenient to put on a multitude of different engines onto this, whether it's steam ones or, you know, just normal 
Kerbal engines, just whatever you want to go for, it's quite useful. We then have a radial ladder that you can put along the outside, and I love it because it's basically just pipes. Who doesn't like that? We then have actually two different types of struts that I want to take a look at here real quick. Let's actually grab a yard arm so we can see them better. And we have first a rope strut, which is perfect, of course, for the masts, as you can make a cool little roped mast. We then also do have down here a wooden strut, which, of course, just gives you a different look and feel. Now, they both have exactly the same strength. Uh, in both the normal strength and sheer strength, but it's just for two different design purposes, however it is you'd like it to look. And that is just cool. Now we then have a steam-powered ladder here, which is always nice to have. It does get retractable at least there, which is quite nice. You know me, I'm a sucker for animation, and I like that accordion action on it. It's very fun. We also then have a steam solar panel, which is quite cool. Though rather than producing electricity, this actually produces steam, which is very important to have. It's quite nice. So we extend this baby out and it will use the power of the sun to create steam. And that's just, that's just fun. Now the next thing we have is a spotlight. So just another fun, cool light to add into your repertoire here. Very good. We then have a steam dynamo. And what this does, again, it is a technically an engine for the particle effects, and ah, oh, look at this thing, it is just gorgeous. And what this dynamo will do is it will use steam and create electricity. So it'll create 8 electricity per second at the use of 0.2 steam per second. So it's just a nice way of turning your steam into electric charge. OA is handy. We then have a Sterling engine here, which, again, beautifully made piece, and this is used as an active radiator. So it will use a little bit of electric charge to cool down whatever parts are nearby, and it is just... Ah, oh, gorgeous. Look at the detailing on that thing. It is pretty cool. Uh, the next thing we have is the... Oh, I forgot to add this one in with the other command pods. It is the Submersible Contraption Control Facility. And we're going to have to zoom out for this one. As it is meant to be the submarine command pod for your ship. It is just a nice little coning tower. We have a lovely door there that you can ent enter through. A hatch there. And overall, a very cool little container. It holds a maximum of two crew members. It does have a powerful reaction wheel and SAS and 150 electric charge. Just a fun little thing for any submarines you build who wouldn't love it. We then do have another air intake here which uh, unlike the horn one this is meant to be attached sort of on the side and then with the air intake there so at a nice 90 degree angle. Very cool. We then have a, another control surface, which is the vertical dihydrogen monoxide displacement thing. And it's just another fin, but rather than the sort of full-on fin, more like, uh, say, a dorsal fin or something. Very cool, always good as a control surface for moving around. We then have the water compressor slash decompressor, and this is, of course, just like with the maritime pack, it is used to take water and compress it into those compressed water chambers to add weight to the ship so that you can balance the ship out, or if you're playing with a submersible, to actually sink it down underwater. And it, of course, uses electric charge to do that with, and it's just a convenient thing to have. We then have another engine, which is actually, let's pop you off there, lovely. The Water Wimble Pusher Propulsion System, and uh, there we go, just a nice another sort of screw engine thing there, very, very cool. Now this one will produce a maximum thrust of 120 using .068 steam per second, and it's, uh, it's quite a nice thing. Again, doesn't spin, which bothers me, but we'll talk more about that momentarily, and uh, that is it for the parts. So let us actually go out and take a look at two different things I made to sort of show off what you can do with it. The first we'll take a look at is what was meant to be created with this thing and that of course is it's actually already on my auto save thing but I'd rather grab the proper one there we go the steam sub let's fill it with crew and go to launch now normally I've been putting my ships in the water before we start and as you've seen on previous episodes that hasn't been going well for me so let's actually just go ahead and launch this thing right off the bat to save a little bit of time and there we go I could have actually made it 
a little bit lower. But yes, unf I turned on all the engines, which is slightly unfortunate. Let us actually shut down you. Shut down you. We'll keep... Nah, we'll shut down all of you. Shut down all of them for now. There we go. We are now in the water. Lovely. Let's turn on our SAS, as it will be a very, very useful thing to have. And, of course, this is a pretty just basic submarine. It's a little bit back-weighted, as you can see here. So, of course, what we'd have to do is add some compressed water into here, if you remember how the maritime pack worked. So, we'll make it so no compressed water can go into this compartment. And we will activate the engine here to start filling up the compressed water here. And as you can see, we are starting to lower down the front end to sort of even it out. Now, I'm not really going to bother and do the full evening out because frankly we've done that before with the maritime pack we'd really don't need to show that off again what is more important though to show off is the steam system now we of course do have a steam in this container and this container we have some ore here and here and we have our lovely steam duct which will produce our steam using said uh, ore and our intake up this way and we also have a dynamo for creating electricity back here so if we turned that one on which actually it's already on and actually throttle it up you can hear that it does sort of have a grinding sound to it and it is using steam and producing electricity for us at the moment though uh, uh yes as you can see right there but we're of course already full oh no that's steam ha ah uh, yes there we go and so it is going to be producing a little bit of uh, electricity, but not a lot at the moment. So let's just go ahead and shut that down because we're already full on it. Now also, subsequently with this, if we activate this engine, there is the wonderful particle effect. So it is taking out the ore and using compressed water, which we have stored up here, along with air intake to produce extra steam. Now again, I'm already full on steam, so I really don't have to worry about that too much. But you can see, actually, that did just drop our compressed water. It was 7.76, now it's 7.5. So there we go, slowly but surely using up our resources to create more glorious steam. But let's turn that off and actually show off the engines. Now, sadly, as I said, these engines currently are not moving. Uh, which, the reason why I'm quite bothered by that is on the mod page, it shows them moving. And so I had a great expectation of this fin going back and forth, this engine moving forward. But alas, we're going 10 meters per second and nothing is really happening with that engine there. And what saddens me about that is the mod is supposed to come with everything it needs, including fire spitter, which is typically what mods use to make things move. And I could not get anything to move on three separate computers and three separate installations of Kerbal Space Program that I tried. So I'm hoping it's just a first release beta issue, or I don't know, perhaps just a weird issue with my apparently three computers that I'll have. But hopefully that'll be fixed in future releases as it would be cool to see this fish fin go back and forth. As again, I said on the mod page, there's a video showing these things moving. So I was, I was expecting them to move, which disappointed me. But oh well, the control surfaces do move, which is always handy to have. As you can see there, is actually moving us around quite a bit, which is lovely. And yes, we have our lovely steam ship. Now let's uh, go ahead and activate this engine too. So we have both going. And there we go, it is pumping out steam. What the heck, let's activate this for more steam. And there we are, particle effects be damned. <laughs> All right, and we are getting to actually quite the quite the speed now. I'm surprised we haven't rolled over yet. Earlier when I tested this, like, the submarine kept rolling. Of course, now it's functioning as a boat, but we could, if we so desired, take it so that uh, both of the compressed water chambers actually do take in water, and we could begin to actually sink down and be a proper submersible. Now, that is the sort of nautical use of this mod, but as I said... You don't have to go nautical. Actually, let's cancel and revert flight to launch, I guess. Yes, we'll do that. Uh, and you can quite easily build other things with it, such as airplanes, spacecraft, etc. It's quite useful. I don't actually think I need the crew members for that. So let's grab another ship that I created for the launch pad, which is my Steam Flyer. And this does actually use the engines, which are frankly intended for water, 
but you know, you don't have to put them in the water. <laughs> We are, of course, using these ones, which I can't read the tiny print, so we're going with whatever they were called. And these ones are set to forward thrust. These ones at the bottom are set to reverse thrust. And this thing should take off like plane. <laughs> Hopefully, as long as things go okay. Now, of course, you could attach to these... Uh, Oh boy, I forget the name of these now, but the, these offshoot bits, other various engines, including like a more modern, proper engine, or, you know, we could just uh, spin these up again. The engines aren't spinning, but we are getting the good steam effects from them. And actually, let's turn back on the UI. Let's wait for its thrust to get up to about 100 before we can actually take off. Otherwise, we crash into the launch pad and everything explodes. But at least, you know, we do have some good sound going here. Oh, I guess it's only 50 that we could get up to. Well, let's release! Ah! Oh, oh, I wasn't throttled up all the way. Okay, okay, there we go. <laughs> ah, yes, beautiful! You know what, let's, let's revert that to fly because I didn't have it, I didn't have it throttled up all the way. I'm a fool, a fool, and I also forgot to put on the SAS, which is generally a very useful thing. So, SAS on, all the way throttled up, turn on the engines, <laughs> and, oh, there, see, I was wondering why it was taking so long to thr get the thrust all the way up, there we go, let us turn off the UI and fly, there we are, we are taking off our steampunk ship into the sky with a crap load of Kerbals on board, again, I'm sad that there is no interiors for these things, but it's just, it's just beautiful. I like this thing. It's 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 just it's just a fun, wacky pack to play with, and that makes me happy. So if you'd like to try this out for yourself, and I would definitely say to give it a go, you can check out the link in the description as usual. And yeah, just go make yourself some crazy ships. I've seen some interesting ones on the forum so far of people making steampunk moon landers out of this, and that's just fun. So if you make some crazy ships, I'd love to see them, share them with me, tweet me, Facebook, etc. But Yes, that's going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course, that you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. <laughs>